Hello, my beautiful people. My name is Dr. Katel. Welcome to another episode of Basic Nigerian History. Last episode, we discussed what happened immediately after the Second World War and how Mrs. Olufemila and Samkuti saved her fellow women from tax and sacked Alekia Demala II. This episode, we're going to discuss how the first three main political parties came about. Awolowa established branches of the Egbe Omo Odudua throughout the entire southwest, and the Igbo Federal Union changed its name to the Igbo States Union. It became one of the largest members of the NCNC. What does this mean again? The National Council of Nigeria and the Cameroons. Hmm. I can see you are going down a rabbit hole of acronyms. Guys, let me just warn you, from this point onwards, you are only going to see even more acronyms, so you better buckle up and get your pens ready. Anyways, the NCNC was the party for the Southeast. Between 1948 and 1952, Azikwe was the president of both the Igbo State Union and the NCNC. In 1949, an event happened that gave the nationalists an excuse to be even more politically active and attempted to speed up the whole conversion to the self-governing process. In November of that year, miners of the River Valley in Enugu mounted a go slow protest for equal treatment and respect in their work. The damp, dark, and dangerous required backbreaking labor and they were low on food and energy, tired of working for the white man on very little pay. The colliery company had a labor force of 6,000 men. The workers in this company had a union known as the Colliery Workers Union, so their go slow was an organized effort. The colliery company began firing hundreds of workers and threatened to fire everyone who kept taking part in the go slow. This was when rumors began to spread that the workers were going to have a stay in strike, which would prevent new employees from coming in. Out of fear of this, Brace Gredo, the company manager and stakeholder of the mine, decided to bring in the police. Management insisted 11 cases of explosives had disappeared and feared that the miners stole it and would use it against them as part of their protest. So one morning, 50 armed policemen in protective gear, metal helmets appeared and stood guard over the explosives, just waiting there. Over the next couple of hours, about 1,500 miners gathered in the valley below in front of the policemen. Some were curious, others needed explosives to continue working Others just wanted an excuse to stop working. However, management saw this as a threat and thought there was going to be a confrontation. So around 1.30 p.m., reinforcements of another 75 riflemen arrived. This was when a superintendent by the name of Phillips decided that the miners were getting more and more menacing and doing what he called a war dance. Can you imagine? He said they were doing a war dance. So he gave the order to fire on the men. 21 unarmed miners were killed and many more were injured. This sparked outrage in all of Nigeria and protests were carried out all over. The British had promised all would be well after the Second World War, yet they were still killing the people needlessly and the new breed of educated elites Nigerians started riding on the coattails of this to demand self-rule right now. At the same time up north, the Bauchi General Improvement Union changed its name to the Northern People's Congress. It was created by a small group of Western educated Northern Nigerians, including Amadou Bello, Aminu Keno, and Apubaka Tafera Balewa. They had to obtain permission from the MS to form a political party that would counterbalance the activities of the southern based parties. They were conservative by nature and didn't want to change the existing political structure. Amedou Bello, war leader of Sokoto, became the head of the party with Tafewa Balewa being the second. Bello wanted to protect the northern social and political structure from southern influence. He was prepared to introduce educational and economic changes to strengthen the north, but his ambition was limited to the north. MPC allied with the British to introduce gradual changes to the Emirates. The Emirates eventually gave support to the limited modernization after seeing the improvements in the living conditions of the South and out of fear of the Southerners that were living amongst them in the North. In 1950, Amin Ukeno broke away from the MPC to form the Northern Elements Progressive Union, NEPU, N-E-P-U, another acronym. I'm telling you, these acronyms are just going wild. He wanted to change the existing political structure, claiming MPC was reliant on the vain hope that the Northern traditional rulers would just accept modernization. However, the North was already dominated by the MPC, so Nepal had to form an alliance with Azikwe's NCNC. In 1951, 
Awolowo reorganized the Nigerian youth movement, which was mainly Yoruba people, and Egbe Omo Odudua into a mainly Yoruba party called AG, also known as the Action Group. They benefited from Awolowo's hand in Egbe Omo Odudua and Nigerians produce traders association it was a big advantage and meant that ag had a rich cultural consciousness amongst yoruba as well as connections in commercial interests awolowo worked to avoid the ag being stigmatized as a tribal group and was kind of successful in enlisting non-yoruba supports yoruba people also had their own animosity and rivalries amongst each other for example ibadan people didn't like awolowo because of his ijebu heritage remember the wars that happened in 1877 all in all ag built a strong and effective organization it had better planning and was more ideologically orientated than the ncnc samuel akintola of ibadan were amongst the lieutenants if you remember he was one of the corps that tried to help the british sabotage the general strike back in the day the ag supported minority groups demand for autonomous states and servants of the midwest states from the western region also the ag wanted to claim back Ilomi as yoruba land and supported separatist movements in the east amongst the non-ebos in 1951 both the southeast and the southwest continued to push colonial governments for self-government but did not oppose this as they weren't ready yet around 1950 and 1951 there was an inter-parliamentary conference at Ibadan which drafted a new constitution known as the Macpherson Constitution. A new constitution was adopted, setting up in North, East and West elected houses of assembly to take decisions on regional affairs. At the same time, the Legislative Council was reformed and became a parliament for all Nigeria. It allowed for both regional autonomy and a federal union. Macpherson made the effort to include Nigerian nationalists at the Ibadan Conference. The new constitution encouraged both political participation on the national level, but also allowed regional governments to have broad legislative powers, which could not be overridden by the national government. It also established a council of ministers, 12 in total, four from each region, and cemented the regional organizational powers into ethnic political parties. And more importantly, it announced the first general election in Nigerian history. Cultural organizations like the MPC, the AG became full political parties. After the votes, the MPC won the North, the NCNC won the East, and the AG won the West. And I think I'll pause there for this episode. Stay tuned for the next episode where we're going to talk about, where we're going to discuss this in even more detail and talk about Nigeria's road to independence. In the meantime, if you could like, comment, subscribe, I would really appreciate it. Also, hit the notification bell so that you get a new notification whenever a new video comes out. And one more thing, our Patreon. If you want, you can support us on Patreon by joining our Patreon community. The link is in the description below. Simply click on it and pledge however much you can. Much love, Dr. Katawa out.